Words cannot express how much I love that lady. That was the warm welcome that Ron DeSantis received when he showed up to campaign in Iowa. And honestly, at this point, I don't even know why he's bothering considering how poorly he's doing. He's actually losing ground to Donald Trump with a 27.7 point deficit to make up. And he could possibly be overtaken by Vivek Ramaswamy nationally soon if this trend continues. And to make matters even worse, in New Hampshire, an Emerson College poll finds that Chris Christie has actually passed him. It's only by a point, but he passed them nonetheless with Tim Scott right on his heels. And these shit poll numbers come after a late July campaign relaunch following concerns from donors that he just doesn't have what it takes to defeat Donald Trump. And I'm assuming that a relaunch entails a pivot away from nonstop woke bullshit and maybe a little bit of a focus on policy, possibly. But even when he tries to be serious and talk about policy, he can't not humiliate himself. So in a CNBC interview, he told Brian Sullivan that he actually supports a ban on congressional stock trading which is pleasantly surprising, right? Now, come to think of it, I think it's the only policy that he's talked about on the campaign trail. Maybe maybe he's mentioned other things, but this is like the one thing he said where woke wasn't in the sentence. And that's that's shocking. It's almost uncharacteristic of him. And if he just stopped talking right there and just said, I support this, period, then there'd be nothing left to discuss with regard to that particular policy he brought up. But the problem is he kept talking and he ended up saying this, quote, I was a congressman for three terms. He continues, I sold all my stock before I went in because I used to do day trading. Not that I had a lot of money, but I would do it. I just stopped doing it because the thing is, is if I traded something, someone will then say maybe some vote was there and I didn't even want the appearance of impropriety. Now, on its face, that sounds good. It sounds like he's been consistent and principled on this issue if we just took him at his word. The problem is, this is Ron DeSantis, and you should never take anything that he says at face value because, predictably, what he said there was a lie. And it's one that is very easily disprovable because Roll Call reports that it's true he did sell off most of his stock holdings, but the problem is that House disclosure forms show that he kept stock in U.S. Steel and Sirius XM. Now, I just don't understand why he chose to lie about something like this. Any journalist can look this up and verify whether or not you're telling the truth. So why give them the opportunity to make you look bad? If you just said that you support a ban on congressional stock trading, I think that most Americans would agree with you, including liberals and lefties. So why go out of your way to give people an opportunity to hand you this L? I just, I don't get it. Maybe he is uh, a masochist and he's a sucker for punishment. But that pales in comparison to another L that he took lately. And I'm, of course, referring to this idiotic feud with Disney. Because as Deadline reports, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis urged the Walt Disney Company to drop its lawsuit against him while telling CNBC that he has moved on from his battle with the company and that it should drop the lawsuit against him. Last call host Brian Sullivan asked DeSantis why he doesn't just pick up the phone and called Disney CEO Bob Iger to resolve the dispute. Quote, we've basically moved on, DeSantis said. They are suing the state of Florida. They are going to lose that lawsuit. So what I would say is, drop the lawsuit. You have the state that even CNBC ranks as number one of all 50 states for economy. But hang on a second. If you're so confident that you're going to win, then why would you choose to move on and then encourage them to drop the lawsuit? Why not take them to court beat them, and then you can tout that as a victory. I mean, as a politician, don't you have an interest in saying, I took on this vote corporation and I won? Why would you unilaterally disarm here? It doesn't make sense. doesn't necessarily scream confidence if you ask me. But for those unaware, this feud started back when DeSantis tried to strip Disney of their special status that gives them control over local taxes and bonding. And DeSantis did this in direct response to them criticizing his don't say gay law. And it's been a while since this story was uh, covered in the news. So this Washington Post clip is going to catch us all up. I mean, they thought that they could create some type of development agreements that would essentially render everything that we did uh, uh, null and void and per put them in control in perpetuity uh, for this. Well, uh, that's not going to work. Uh, that's not going to fly. Whatever rationale there was 60 years ago uh, to do that, clearly now we're in a much different era as a state. Walt Disney himself oversaw the purchase of 
49 square uh, miles in Central Florida, used to be orange roads and swamp land. His executives worked with the state legislature, who were so happy to have Disney in Florida, to create a special taxing district. They've had this special district since 1967. There are thousands of those in Florida. I live in a special taxing district. They usually take care of things like roads and parks, pretty simple stuff. For Disney, it was very different. They wanted to build this, this magic kingdom, which they did using their own rules and their own, not having to worry about uh, getting permits from local governments and red tape and bureaucracy. And it allowed Disney to grow and develop the way it wanted to. Worked out very well for Disney. Disney is suing for its specific allegations. Uh, they're saying that the state is punishing them for their free speech. And corporations are now considered to have the rights of citizens, right? Ever since the uh, Supreme Court decision years ago. So Disney is using those rights as a citizen to say, we can speak, we can say whatever we want, and we shouldn't be punished by the government for doing that. Governor DeSantis has boasted about standing up to Disney. He's written about it in his book. He thinks that that's one of the reasons he was reelected, because he stood up against Disney. That last part was wild to me. He actually thinks that he was reelected for standing up to Disney. Turns out, though, that that's not the case since he's backing down. Now, to be clear, I don't think that corporations are people, nor do I think that they should get special treatment by states. But DeSantis' decision to go after them is not motivated by this desire to rein in corporate greed and corporate hegemony. It is motivated purely by them condemning him and his dumbass don't say gay law. So, I mean, as a leftist, this is one of those situations where... I want to see them fight, and I would want them both to lose in theory. But in this predicament, there's one loser, and that is very clearly Ron DeSantis. And remember, before he announced that he's moving on, earlier this year, he was humiliated by Disney when they outsmarted him using some old-ass claws from an old document from the 17th fucking century. So it makes sense that now he'd want to move on after they made him look like an idiot. But I'm not so sure that the company wants to move on because they've made it very clear that they're pretty fucking pissed pissed off. Newsweek explains, despite his claims to have moved on from the feud, DeSantis has frequently cited his conflict with Disney during his presidential campaign, at one point accusing the company of sexualizing children. Iger, speaking with CNBC in July, dismissed that accusation in strong terms. The last thing that I want for the company is for the company to be drawn into any culture wars, Iger said. We are a preeminent entertainer in the world, and we're proud of our track record there. The notion that Disney is in any way sexualizing children quite frankly, is preposterous and inaccurate. Iger also defended his company's lawsuit against the Florida government, arguing that Disney was within its right to speak out against the Don't Say Gay bill and said that DeSantis's reaction was not something that we could sit back and tolerate. Now, even if it's not true, I'm glad that Ron DeSantis said that Disney was trying to sexualize kids because it really exposes how conservatives will call anything sexualization and it makes their claims against LGBTQ plus people look that much more ridiculous if they're accusing Disney of sexualizing children. But to be clear, the company doesn't actually give a shit about Florida's homophobic laws, right? They were pressured to condemn the Don't Say Gay law after they took heat for their donations to the Florida Republican Party. In fact, they were accused of being complicit since they helped to bankroll the party that enacted that law, and they condemned it to save face, right? But they're not woke. Remember, Bob Iger condemned striking actors and writers saying that their demands weren't realistic and that their demands were disturbing to him. So you are delusional if you think that this company cares about anything but their bottom line. The extent to which they care about politics begins and ends with taxes and regulations. And everything else is just window dressing. But Ron DeSantis thought that he could make an example out of this supposedly woke corporation. But as a capitalist, he forgot that corporations have all the power in our society. And this ended up blowing up in his face as everything does. But that's not the first thing to blow up in his face, and it certainly is not going to be the last thing to blow up in his face, because Ron DeSantis is obviously a miserable piece of shit who lacks authenticity and only cares about getting more power. And there's a lot of narcissistic sociopaths in politics like DeSantis, but they all have to fake it to make it. Ron DeSantis, however, can't do that. He's not able to pull it off. And as a result, most Americans can see right through him. They see him for the fraud that he is. So, you know, it's, it's great to see him take L after L after L. I, for one, enjoy watching his downfall because this fascist failure is a win for humanity. Woke mom.